So my top loadout video, I covered the FJX Horus and I explained kind of the various different builds. And one thing that people brought up is like, why didn't you cover the conversion kit? So I thought I'd do a compare and contrast, kind of talk about the pros and cons of each of these and how they differ because they are definitely different. And I thought I'd give you the information so you can help better decide based on how you want to use this gun. Because after they added this conversion kit, it also got a bigger magazine. As we can see right here, you are still able to equip the 60 round max. So it's not a bug. And I thought it was going to be very similar to the way the MCW locks and unlocks certain attachments, as well as the pull them yacht where you're able to put on that stock that eliminates all the recoil, but you can't do that on the base version. I thought it was going to be like that. But obviously with this case, we do get a 60 round mag. So we can go ahead and factor that in. So you can see here, we have the FJX Horus with the conversion kit, as well as the base version. And I was comparing it to what is kind of the pound for pound best weapon at the moment, which is the Superi 46. A biggest downside with the Superi is the 40 round mag. Can be a little bit lackluster when you look at the downs per mag here. It comes up a little bit short. 3.1, 2.9, and 2.7, which doesn't sound like a lot, but as your accuracy decreases, this number will go down and as it has its drop-offs, it'll also go down. What we can see here is the FGX Horus with the conversion kit has a slower rate of fire compared to the 984. So the, the base version is going to be a little bit more forgiving. They both have the 60 round mag, which we can see there pretty straightforward. And the damage overall, you can see that the conversion kit increases the damage up to about a 31 average from 28 impacting the shots to kill which makes sense because it has a slower fire rate uh, and you can kind of see how that trails off. So when we compare these TTKs, the, the conversion kit version comes up at 654 compared to 610. 40 milliseconds is pretty significant with the Superi coming in kind of in the middle. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the various attachments. You can see kind of up here on the top end, uh, we're gonna go ahead and break down. That's just one set of the attachments. We're gonna talk about the various ones because there will be preferences as well as how you're going to use this specific weapon. Uh, so when we come down here, we go to kind of a little bit of a spreadsheet. We kind of get the TTK comparison. Uh, the blue line right here, which is the, the slowest TTK up that close, is the conversion kit version. Um, the red line is the fast TTK, and that's the base version. And then we got the yellow superi kind of coming in the middle. Realistically, up to about 20 meters, these are kind of the same guns for the most part. FJX Horus drops off a little bit at the 10 meter mark, but you can stretch this up to about 12 meters depending on the attachments you put on. But for the most part, these guns are relatively similar uh, and the Superi comes out a little bit on top. As you get beyond 20 meters, the base FJX Horus falls off pretty hard. Uh, and then the, the conversion kit FJX Horus goes up to about 40 meters. So great for sniper support. Either way, the Superi kind of comes in clutch. This is more like if you don't really like the Superi and you're choosing between the FJX Horus and the Jack or the conversion kit version, it kind of gives you a little bit of tools to work with. Now we got to go ahead and look at these individual attachments. You have to keep in mind that the FJX Horus doesn't allow you to equip an under barrel by default or it severely limits your under barrel choices, uh, depending on what barrel you go with. If you use the Mardis, you're going to get access to more options. If you use the Sin, you can get access to fewer options, which still are great. Uh, under barrel, they nerfed the DR6 a long time ago, but it's still pretty good. Most of the difference between a lot of these is fairly negligible. And in a very small number of engagements, will these actually impact you winning or losing the gunfight? Very small percentage. Uh, when it comes to the Zemin versus the purifier, it depends on the bullet velocity, the damage drop off, because the purifier is going to nerf that. I'm sure there's other muzzles you can use, the Komodo and all these other. This is probably the vast majority, depending on what you're going to lean into. The barrel, like I said, you get those options. The stock, depending on how you want to utilize that, if you care more about aim down sight versus strafe versus recoil, it's going to matter. And then now that we have the 60 round mag, you kind of get the choices there. And then if you have a free attachment because you decide not to go with an optic, you can go with the high grain or something like that. And that's pretty much the main one you're going to go to. So virtually almost all the other 100 attachments are useless for the most part. Obviously we can kind of narrow it down. So in this particular build, I'm gonna go ahead and assume I am using the 60 round mag and I'm going to assume I'm going to use an optic. That takes up two of the attachment slots and then we can kind of build it out from there. We can go ahead and look at the base stats here. 480 bullet velocity isn't particularly good. Um, the effective damage range only about 10 meters. We could build on top of that uh, if we wanted to do that. So we get a couple options on the barrel. Like I said, this one will limit our attachments if we go with the sin. 
Uh, for example, if I go over here, the underbarrel, there are a couple we can uh, equip. We can get the Kimura, the Bruin Heavy. There's some other ones here. But you can see something like the XRK Edge is locked. The DR6, locked. The Bruin Heavy, locked. So we are a little bit limited in those areas. But we go ahead and put on the Mardis. All of a sudden, now we get access to those attachments. We go ahead and put on the Sin. We're going to have restrictions on those attachments. They're locked again. So it really depends on what kind of what you lean towards. If you like the Kimura, then maybe you go with this one because you can go ahead and get the extra bullet velocity, which you can see that gets bumped up by 20%, and the range by about 15%, which is an extra two-ish meters. This one will slow down your movement speed, uh, whereas this one's going to go ahead and help your recoil control. So it really depends on kind of where you lean. For me, I don't really like a gun that has 480 bullet velocity. I think that's kind of low. So I would tend to lean towards higher bullet velocity. Uh, and, you know, if it, it's hurting recoil too much, maybe I do have to sacrifice it and go the other way. When it comes to the different muzzles, we can go ahead and go here. This one's going to hurt our muzzle velocity, but we bumped it up on the other side. And this will help the horizontal recoil significantly by the 18%. Versus the Zemin, we're going to lose a little bit of bullet velocity. Not quite as much as the Purifier, um, because that's also hurting our range. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get better vertical recoil. So this depends on how the gun feels to you. A lot of times it's about just going into the firing range and see which one shoots better for you. I think most people kind of go with the Zemin. This is kind of how I would build it. Then we either go with an underbarrel and our stock in this case. Like I said, there's kind of two different stocks we'd go with. We either go with the Modus or we're going to go with the Ripper. You can see the Ripper does have more penalties to your aiming stability and stuff like that. So even though they don't necessarily pop up on the spreadsheet of the stats, uh, it will hurt you in those aiming idle sway, gun kick. So this one's, there are trade-offs. This one's going to have good movement. You know, they are trade-offs depending on what you prefer. But for the vast majority of gunfights, probably not a big deal. That's kind of how I would build it out. You could um, potentially, this is kind of in the middle ground where you kind of are having a few different options. And this is more for the 610 millisecond option. Pretty straightforward build. Uh, we can go ahead and kind of shoot the target. That's probably beyond the range that we need to shoot a target. Again, the drop off that you're probably going to engage within 20 meters with this gun, ideally within that 12 ish meter. So you're getting that fast DTK because beyond that, the drop off is not great as we saw in the comparison. If we do decide to go ahead and go with the conversion kit, it actually replaces the magazine and we still get the 60 round mag. So we can essentially build it out very similar, but we don't need a barrel. So we can go ahead and kind of build this out how we want. We get a little bit extra bullet velocity, the cost of the TTK. Um, so you kind of get that part going. So we can still go with the XRK, the hand stop, the Kimura. They're all pretty good. The only problem with the Kimura, in my opinion, it will slow down that aim down sight speed. As you see there, it drops down to 229 versus something like 201 or 207. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but in close range engagements, 20 milliseconds could be the difference between you getting killed or not, especially with the slower TTK, you might not want the slower aim down sight. So you got to kind of pick and choose. I generally go with the XRK after the DR got nerfed. And in this case, if you want ultra bullet velocity, we can go ahead and go with the high grain rounds. And there you go. Pretty straightforward. Or we can go ahead and help out that stock and go with the modus. Uh, which I think is pretty solid. If you want to have a little bit better aim, I'll probably go with the Modus. If you don't care too much about the aim, you want the mobility, you want the Ripper light stock because that is hurting some of your aiming idle sway. So it kind of just depends. So that gives you two builds essentially with this gun. This one will be a little bit slower TTK and then it kind of has a little bit further payoff as a sniper support. And then the other one's going to excel at super close range. Either way, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility depending on how you want to build the gun out. And I'm sure there's other builds that I'm not even talking about. I just kind of want to keep it streamlined. If you have specific attachments that you think make the build great, feel free to leave them in the comments section. And if there's another comparison you want to do, I'm thinking of doing the Holger 26 and the 5.56. We'll kind of see what those compare at. Since those are kind of a little bit more different weapons, let me know. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.